Back on Morningland, thanks for joining us today. We're talking about lung cancer and uh, some of the treatments and the screening, which can be so crucial, which is really something that's relatively new. With us this morning is Dr. Kim Sandler. She's from over at Vanderbilt, the Lung Screening Program. Not every hospital has it. She goes and talks to other hospitals about getting it started. You said the, the research was made available, and it was a few years back, but in 2011, right? They thought, yes. let's look and see if screening makes a difference. What did they find? Yeah, so they published a trial in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2011. The okay. trial enrolled over 53,000 patients at 33 different medical centers, and they randomized patients to having a CT scan or a chest x-ray once a year for three years. Just these people just they had to meet the criteria of being yes. smokers or whatever but just to come in no other symptoms no no reason to believe they have a cancer but let's just right. come in and check you out they had to have no signs or symptoms of lung cancer okay. when they came in for screening okay and what they saw was a 20 percent reduction in mortality from lung cancer with an annual ct scan and a seven percent reduction in overall mortality from all causes if you have a ct scan as opposed to an x-ray and so they screened people for three years and they followed them for a total of six years hmm. published the data in two 2011. Vanderbilt was one of the centers that participated in the trial and then we began our screening program in 2013. Okay so in a nutshell basically what they found was that by screening these individuals they discovered some cancers that they didn't know were there which allowed them to start treating it at a much earlier stage which vastly improved their chances for survival. Yes exactly. That's basically it. I mean That's that makes it. sense. Now the right. key was does the screening really catch everything and does it work? And you said by the way okay so the screening was checking for abnormalities in the lungs that could save their life beyond just lung cancers could have been other things too? Or? Yeah, so we can see the lungs, we also see the heart, and we see the vessels oh. that attach to the heart, and sometimes there are abnormalities there. Our scans go all the way down to the top of the abdomen because we need to get all of that lung tissue. So you see any tumors? So sometimes we see a little bit of the kidneys, and oh. smokers are at increased risk for other types of cancers. So we found a couple of mm. renal masses in our screening program as well that have gone on to be cancers that were detected early. Oh, that's interesting. Just a silly question, probably I should know the answer to this. Is there such thing as heart cancer? Can it's you get cancer of the heart? You certainly can. There are primary really? tumors of the heart. It's much more common to have metastatic disease to the heart, so cancers that develop other places and then go to the heart. And that, that give you tumors? Yes, so, so it's about 20 oh, okay. times more common to maybe have a melanoma or a breast cancer or even a lung cancer that would then send um, malignant cells to the heart and create a tumor. But we do see some malignant tumors in the heart. We also see benign masses in the heart. Uh. I guess that makes sense. Could, they, uh, a mask could be anywhere. Is that yes. kind of a little unusual or is it pretty common? It's not as common as other cancers. Okay, because okay. Yeah. I just hadn't heard it. Well, let's take some phone calls. we got the lines open, 737-7587. And let's go to Todd. Hi, Todd. Hi. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Uh, thanks for taking my call. I, uh, uh, I watch you all. I watch you all the time. And uh, I... Uh, I have, um, my, my dad got killed in an airplane crash when I was eight years old. Okay. Actually, I was six, my brother was eight. Okay, I started smoking when I was eight years old. Wow. And I will be 55 next year. So you're still smoking now, I guess, huh? Yes, sir. How many packs a day? Unfortunately, I am. Um, I have COPD. Okay. I have no insurance. I have uh, hmm. filed for my disability. Uh, I've got multiple uh, medical problems. Um, I was 156 pounds, and now I'm down to 97 pounds. Wow, you've lost, so have you gone in to be screened to see, do you have any symptoms maybe for, uh, for cancer? Have you been checked for that? Well, no, they checked my prostate because prostate has run in my family um, hmm. about every male in my family has, has had prostate and my dad's brother had to have his removed Okay, Todd, so let me ask you this. Have your doctors tried to get you to quit smoking, but it's just too strong of an addiction? Is that it? Yeah, well, I was divorced in 2011 after 26 years. Mm -hmm. And I live alone. I'm sorry. Um, I, uh, so I've been under a lot of stress. I understand, sir. That's, and you're 58 years old, right? I'm sorry? You said you're 58? No, sir. I'll be 55 next year. Okay. Wow. All right. Hang tight. 
He needs to go get screening. <laughs> well, with that amount of weight loss, I'm not sure he would actually qualify for screening because that significant amount of weight loss is significant enough to indicate to us that there might be something that's already there. So my recommendation would be that he see his doctor and he probably needs a diagnostic CT scan of the mm -hmm. chest because our level of suspicion with that amount of weight loss is very, very high. But it's really important that he comes to see someone as soon as possible. Yeah, and again, I know a lot of people have this issue, a problem with insurance. You need yeah. to go somewhere um, and there are places that you can find that can help you with that, you mm -hmm. know, and if you're going for disability, um, you're, he's only 55. Holy cow, but that's, that's, that's a significant weight loss. That's yes. what you're saying. Among the yes. symptoms, as much as he's lost, he has, now COPD, is that sometimes affiliated with lung cancers? They go hand in hand at all? Yeah, so the risk of lung cancer is much higher in people with COPD. Okay. Uh, we know that, so that is one of the, the precursors. It also results primarily from results of, of cigarette smoking. Gosh, started smoking since eight years old. And of course, his father was gone and passed away. Tobacco and tobacco companies, and there's smokers out there absolutely horrible yeah horrible they're killers and this poor man he's addicted to it and he can't get off it he needs you need to Todd listen you just need to find a way to go see a doctor okay you have to go you've lost so much weight the odds are there is something bad going on you need to check it out and and do um, please check that out and get some help on that um, let's go next to Brian Brian good morning hey good morning um, I was just thinking back about uh, Andy Kaufman and uh, he called in his manager and Bob Smuda and his girlfriend to a little lunch meeting. And he tells me, he goes, I got lung cancer. And his agent said, he goes, but Andy, you don't smoke. And then Bob Smuda is his <laughs> like friend, uh, co-conspirator. He's like, oh yeah, this is great. We'll work it into the act. Cause he thought he was a goof. He, it was a yeah. goof. And then his girlfriend said, oh, Andy, you wouldn't joke about this. No, he was well, legit. I'm not sure what yeah. happened with that, but I think it was because I never believed in secondhand smoke. But I guess Andy, he had worked in a lot of smoky clubs with starting out. and He could have had a genetic component. Are you familiar with Andy Kaufman, the comic? Sure. And that situation. I assume you probably are. Um, yeah, that one. I'm glad he brought that up for a couple of good reasons, actually. But... Um, yeah, uh, Andy Kaufman did not have any history in the back, and he is a well-known comic. He was on the TV show Taxi. I know we're dating ourselves a bit here, but very well-known, and uh, ended up with uh, lung cancer out mm -hmm. of the blue. Mm -hmm. They thought it was a routine at first, and he's all like, no, this is real. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know, um, secondhand smoke he mentioned. Yes, and there is research into secondhand smoke. Um, right now, because we see so many false positives with screening, where we see things that could be cancer but then turn out to be benign, we want to make sure that the people who actually come in to have screening examinations are at very high risk from smoking themselves. There's other research looking at secondhand smoke and other precursors for lung <coughs> cancer, but we haven't yet shown that screening is applicable to those people at this point. Okay, the other part of Andy, you probably may not remember this, I mean, he was pretty far gone when they found it, and he went and had some um, experimental treatments, the holistic stuff or whatever, and none of it worked. In mm -hmm. fact, I think some of who he went to were quacks. You need to make sure you go, uh, I mean, you know, not, you can't save everyone. Doctors mm -hmm. aren't miracle workers. But um, Andy Kaufman chose to go some alternative routes, and it did not work. Yeah, we practice evidence-based medicine. So yeah. everything we do comes out of clinical trials and, and things where we have done the best we possibly can to standardize all of the therapies and to find out what works best for patients yeah. and to personalize their care. Exactly, I'm not, and I'm not saying some of these holistic things can't assist in some way, and I know a lot of play, they do um, you know, multitasking sure. with that, but yeah, uh, read up on Andy Kaufman, you'll find out it was a sad story on the way that played out for him. Let's go to Stacy. Hi, Stacy. Good morning, Nick. Good morning. Um, the Andy Kaufman thing is kind of shrouded in mystery, so yeah. it may not have anything to do with, you know, as far as what he was faking and it whatever. It is. But he's, he, he, he did die at a young age. So. He, he sure did. You're right about that. Um, my question, well, actually, the, the doctor may have already answered my second question, which had to do with the possibilities of broadening the eligibility for screening. And the other question is, without having, you know, spoken with me further and examined me, if she you could give me an idea of my risk, and let me kind of give you the backstory on that. Sure. I was hit by a car in 2012, and they wanted to, um, uh, as a pedestrian, and they and they wanted to do a bunch of tests to make sure that, you know, what they couldn't see, that, that they could rule out a bunch of stuff. And what they told me was, you have emphysema. 
And I said, you have got to be kidding. I, I don't smoke. My parents have never smoked. Um, you know, being in broadcasting, maybe I've been uh, exposed to a little bit of that stuff. But when I got out of there, first thing I did when I went uh, just for a follow-up with my um, primary care was to tell her about this thing with, with the emphysema. And she says, well, if, if you're concerned, we can, you know, I can refer you to a pulmonary person, which she did, and I blew in the thing. And by the way, the, the hospitals used to offer lung cancer screening, just, um, you know, kind of health care type things at, at the, the hospital, yeah. and I took those, um, uh, and I went for those, and never had an issue. So I'm hit by the car. She's telling me I have emphysema, or the, 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 the ER people are telling me I have emphysema. I go to the primary care. She refers me. I blow in the tube, and, and they said, yes, you do, and it's like hmm. stage four or something, which is like the, the least... To, to worry about. Yeah. Subsequently, and, and then my doctor said, um, you know, it's probably environmental, and then there is nothing to worry about. You know, it's kind of bordering on hypochondria. I changed doctors, not because of that, but just because of insurance, and told the, the next doctor about it. She said, well, um, there is a test for emphysema, and we can find out a little bit more definitive, definitively if you carry the gene. So I took the genetic test, and I don't have the, the gene. But because of the connection that the doctor day, today has made between emphysema and lung cancer, again, back to my question, what is my risk? Okay, thanks. Yeah, she laid that out. How about yeah, it? Yeah, that's an excellent question. So when we talk <laughs> about emphysema or COPD being chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And again, that's, now, Stacy, when you hear her talk, it doesn't seem like she's having issues breathing, but, you know, she, she's articulate, but that just means... What, you can't take a full breath sometimes? You have very or? difficult, you have a difficult time getting air out. Uh, so it has out. to do with the elastic fibers oh, like in the she lungs. she was saying blowing. Okay. Yeah, so, it, so we measure the ability of forced expiration gotcha. and how much air that can come out. So when we see emphysema and we see it on CT scans or we see it in pulmonary function tests, it's an inability for the air to get out and we can see that sometimes there's some parenchymal distortion in the lungs. We most commonly see it with cigarette exposure, but as she mentioned, it can be from other exposures. Um, what we are leaning towards now in screening, right now it's just based on age and pack years. There are some researchers that are arguing that we should be going to a risk prediction model. So when you come in to see us, you should tell us, have you had emphysema? Have you had a relative with lung cancer? We use that information in addition to other factors, and we can tell you your individualized risk for developing lung cancer in the next six years. And we do that for every patient that comes into our screening program. And we say, your risk of developing lung cancer in the next six years is this percent. And what some people are saying is, rather than just looking at whether or not you smoked a certain amount in your age, we should look at your individualized risk and if your risk is above a certain threshold what's been put out there is if your risk is greater than 1.5 percent of developing lung cancer in the next six years then you should be eligible for screening and that would take into account things like emphysema and other uh, predictors for lung cancer and some people who maybe have met that pack year requirement, but they quit smoking 10 or even 15 years ago, mm -hmm. right now you're still eligible for screening if you quit up to 15 years ago. But your risk does go down significantly once you're able to quit smoking. So some huh. people would fall below that 1.5% threshold and maybe right. shouldn't be screened. So she Okay, so what, she, she can go and check and see if she meets that criteria? It wouldn't be covered by insurance right now unless okay. she met the age and pack I, I year, see. and it sounds like she's a non-smoker. Okay, at this point. At least she's aware of it, and that's yes, what's good. Absolutely. You, you, you keep track. Listen, we need to take a, a break on that note. When we come back, more of your phone calls right after this. This is a Storm 5 HD weather update.